Hi, it's Dwayne with Modern Inc. And we're going to be going back to the future with an air cooler from Cooler Master. So what do I mean that we're going back to the future? Well, way back, way, way, way back. Let's think. 2007, I think it was maybe around there, that Cooler Master came out with the Hyper 212. Eh, it's an air cooler but it is like the air cooler. <laughs> I, I don't know what they did, uh, what aliens they had to talk to to get the secret information on how to create this thing. But this thing has been a, a legend for the last 13 years. And they've changed very little on it over the years because there was real, no need to. So if you get perfection, then why do you want to change it? But they have done some upgrades and they've had done some adjustments because, well, motherboard layouts, right? <laughs> Even motherboard layouts have kind of changed in the way they are. So they've had to make some adjustments and, and stuff like that. But overall, they've kept it pretty much exactly the same for all these years. So what we're going to look at here is it's the Hyper 212 Evo version 2. So I'm actually going to test this against the older version. And then I'm also going to test it against the ML360 mirror that we just did. So I want to see how that really does. But the big question people are like, well, why do you want to go to air cooling when water cooling is all the rage? Some people don't want to do that, okay? Some people don't even want to put an AIO in. Other people like the air coolers. It's, it's consistent and it just works. Or maybe say you're building something for a family member and uh, you don't want to have to go over and check your system all the time to see if it's running and fill up the water on the custom loop and all this crap. You can just put an air cooler in and you're all right, done. So this thing is set for, yeah, so it can go 160,000 MTTF. So what is MTTF stand for? It's mean times tell failure. So it can go 160,000 hours, which equivalents to a little over 18 years of straight running. The fan can run on this thing. So if you have a PC that's running for more than 18 years, good for you. I don't know why, but <laughs> maybe you work for the government, but why? Why even worry about it? So it's, it's a simple design and it's way to go. So it's just too much talking about that. Let's dive into this and really see what makes this thing special. Truthfully, the, the, the cooler itself is not that big. It's 155 millimeters tall, I believe it is, which will fit into like most cases very easily no problems, even the uh, NR200 that we just did recently. So, so what do we get here? Of course, we've got eh, the hardware, right? So multiple installations. What can you put it on? Everything. <laughs> you can put it on every, I think, Intel socket and every AMD socket setup and motherboard that there is out there. I mean, literally, it's, again, an awesome, awesome setup there. Take it out. This is it. This is the Hyper 212 Evo version 2. They haven't changed much of the design at, at all throughout all these years for the last 13 years. I mean, why would you want to mess with it if it, if it works, right? Just maybe mix some tweaks here or there. And that's what they've actually had to do. Some of the times it's, it's because of motherboards. Maybe motherboards over time have changed those little layouts and stuff. So they've had to change where the memory goes and how it works with that. So, but we'll look at that a little bit later. But overall, Really, they haven't changed much. It's kind of the same design. I mean, it's got the, the same layout. It's got the heat pipes, a single fan. The fan uh, is very important to this layout, right? So this is a new sickle flow, 120 millimeter fan. It's able to do 2.5 on static pressure, 2.5 millimeters of water. So what does that mean? That means it can actually push a lot of air through the coil or through the cooling fans. Some fans are meant for just moving air. And once you put something in front of them that has a little bit of resistance, then they have a hard time pushing the air. This is designed to push a lot of air through the coil, through the fins, exactly what you want. So we've got four heat pipes, and it goes down, goes through the bottom, and back up to the top. One thing they did right from the beginning, and they're still doing to today, is that you have direct contact to the CPU from the heat pipes. It's not built 
right into the block where the block comes over the top and the aluminum and all that stuff and then it has to take the heat pipe moves it from the aluminum this is directly from the cpu the bracket on the bottom again or aluminum this thing is very very light the fan is pwn so whenever you plug it in you can adjust it and make sure you put it onto the cpu socket one right there's always the one that says cpu so there should be cpu maybe cpu one or cpu two put it on one of the cpu ones because that way it'll regulate the fan according to the temperature of the cpu i know you guys already know that stuff at the top of the cooler there's some notches so there are 45 degree notches that are around each heat pipe and those notches go down all the way through through every one of the blades what does that do so what it does it helps create a uh, airflow so you've got a cool air and a hot air airflow kind of technique going on so it'll draw air through and also pull air out at the same time why do you want to do that because that's right next to the heat pipes so the quicker you can move air from the heat pipes the quicker you can cool things down one of the things cool message says is kind of special about the hyper 12 evo is that well it's compatible with like all motherboards and that it's compatible with all ram setups they say 100 percent Boy, I, I, I wouldn't say 100%, you know, to me, I'd be like, okay, we're like 99.9% .9 sure because somebody out there is going to have something that is completely different than what everybody else has. Just saying. The good thing is, is that no matter how you set this up, either this way, or if you set it up, maybe this way, that it's supposed to be able to have enough clearance with your RAM not to interfere with anything. We'll kind of see that. So I've got some DDR4. Mm, typical, right? It's got a heat spreader that's probably eh, three eighths of an inch or, or higher above the actual module itself. And then I get some DDR3 that is just way above. It's like a comb. So, of course, I can't put it into this one, but I'll put it in as far as I can, as close to it, so we can see what's going to happen. Right? So the DDR4, and of course, I have a 50 50 chance of putting this in right. Ooh, lottery ticket. So that's kind of typical setup, right? So you can see where it's sitting here. Pretty much typical. I've got it to the farthest one closest to the CPU. And then if we put it in with the fan, and I'm going to guesstimate that it would be approximately right there, maybe even a little over. So we have got two millimeters. Yeah. <laughs> two millimeters uh, of clearance between that and the fan itself and it does not do any impedance in the fan itself so you can see that it actually does just on the bottom edge but not the fan of the cooling of itself which is really great but if you're really worried about that then you can just take it turn it around and then you can just do that and then you've got I don't know, half inch clearance. So you've got plenty of clearance there and the fan goes out this way. Typically me, this is how I would put it up anyway, because I want the, the air to come through and I want it to be pushed out the back. So let's do a quick comparison in case you've got some DDR RAM that's standing up way tall because I've seen some out there that's got like these wings that hang up. I'm gonna put this about in the right spot and even goes up a little higher. So as we can see, even in this configuration, plenty, plenty of space, right? I can put my finger in there. If I turn it around, again, guesstimation right now, about the same. So we're looking at about a two millimeter maybe distance from there. The big difference on this though is going to be that, see how much it does impede the fan? Yeah, it's blocking about, geez, maybe a quarter of the fan. So that's, that's not good, especially if I had tall memory like that, would do that. Because that way, what you're actually doing from the fan, you'd be drawing air in from the sides and also from the back. So everywhere won't be that big of a deal. And you've got a nice big gap still here. I mean, I can put my whole hand. As I stated before, Cooler Master gave you all kinds of brackets to put this thing into it. anything. I mean, whatever socket you can think of, you can absolutely do it. So we've got brackets there. Ooh, even that, so fan bracket, I'm guessing. So either if you broke one, you would have a spares, or if you wanted to, you can actually add a second fan. 
Some people like to do that. Some people like to have a push-pull setup. So I might have to try that, see how that works out. Because I do have some other Sikafor fans. So maybe I'll, I'll try that during my testing, is see how it works with a single fan or maybe with a double fan. Yeah, that's, that's good thinking. Yeah, thanks, Dwayne. Maybe that's why they did that. <laughs> so this has got, so it hooks up to like CPU one or CPU two on your motherboard, and then you can plug two other fans in there. Man, they're like way ahead of the game on that one. I think you need even some, a little bit of thermal paste in there. So I've dealt with some of the things that they've done before. They do a really good job like on these brackets, this particular bracket. So it's, of course, this is the one that goes on the back of the motherboard. Right. So you can set it on the back and it's even stamped on here. It says like, use this one for Intel. This is for Intel. And then they've got these little brackets. And these brackets you can actually slide on to certain spots and you can adjust it. So as I think I've got, you can see the legs over here. Camera, I'm trying to get an overhead shot. Hopefully it'll work. And then I've got one over here. So I'm gonna try and put this together. Um, I think I'm gonna do the, the Intel one, right? That's well, it's an Intel board. as simple as that. They made this, like I said, started out in 2007. So they've got the installation down to a perfect little T and everything that you need to do, all the little extras, they make it super simple, especially for somebody who's the first time that's maybe putting a system together and maybe this might be their first one. Perfect, really easy to do. I mean, look, at, I mean, it took me, I sped it up a little bit there, but you know what? Probably overall, maybe a couple more minutes more, but hardly any time. Not any much different than with the uh, AMD side of it. You'd get a different size of brackets that would go on there. Same kind of setup though. Just a little bit of different size, of course, uh, but everything else is about the same. So ew, yeah, they even give you screws for the extra fan. All right, so I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna jump in and start doing the testing on this and then we'll come back with the final results. You got to look at the charts. What do you think? I think this thing did actually pretty dang good for what it does for 40 bucks. It's not too bad, right? I mean, it's not the most beautiful thing, but if, hey, if it's aesthetics that you want, then you need to look at something else. Like when we tested against the 212 Black Edition, which I have here. Aesthetic wise, looks more appeasing, but performance wise, it was a little less. And why? This is me thinking, like I told you before, this one has all the copper that disposed and goes right onto the CPU, right? This one, because of the aesthetics, they've actually got like, I think it's like a nickel plated on top of it and it's kind of a black nickel plate. And it's also here. So you don't have the direct contact to the heat pipes. You do, but you don't. What I'm saying is that you get that thin layer of like nickel or chrome that might be in there. And I think that uh, probably impede the heat transfer just a tiny bit. A few degrees though, you know what? It's, it's really not that big of a deal. It, it, it really is. As you can see, uh, it was a few degrees, even at it was as idle, they were about the same. And then when you went to uh, full throttle, you know, it was like 4.3. And then when I overclocked it at 4.8, 
the temperature stayed about the same difference. I think it was like three degrees. So it could be plus or minus a little bit, but that's really not that much. I mean, especially if it's just an everyday kind of usage kind of stuff, then I wouldn't worry about it. If you're overclocking, then of course, you're gonna probably need to go with a little heftier air cooler or gonna go to the water cooling side. Because as you can see, I tested it against the ML280 and well, the ML280 just did way better than both of these. But again, that's water cooling. So you have your options. Kind of, kind of work really good. <laughs> Maybe not too pretty. Worked okay. A lot more prettier. But the ML280, a little, little nicer looking all the way around, but also did a little better. I highly recommend this if you're going to go with air cooling. It's super easy to install way, way cheap. I mean, like 40 bucks and it's just going to work because this thing has been working since 2007, man, this design. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like the video. If you have any comments, please put them in. We'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Check out some of our other videos on our reviews and also of our modding content. And remember, have a great day and always void your warranty.